Welcome to Nash and Anna Podcast about eight scenes in a row. I'm Lisa Fernandes and... I'm Chris Joe Wardna. Hello! That's entertainment! Da 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 da. We are about to review the all singing, all dancing, that's entertainment. Written by Ed McElroy and Larry Strothier and directed by Gary Meacher. And Chris, probably has some facts about these folks coming up. I absolutely do, especially Gary Mentier, which I feel very bad we did not talk about those earlier, but we will get to that soon. He has a blockbuster job on this episode. We have to give him all the props. He does Mm. such a good job in this one. Here's what the episode's about. After Combine shows Frank his best Tom Jones impression while auditioning his acts for Combine Bills, Combine and Frank get to arguing about what sort of music is the best music. The modern rock and or roll songs of the mid-1960s or the standards of Frank's time. As they take their argument to Cowboy Bills, the musical segments escalate. Which era will come out on top? What do you think of this one? I don't know what it is that I expected, but it certainly wasn't this. <laughs> the, I would also say this is a clear inspiration to a lot of like cartoons and other shows that have done musical episodes since then. This is probably... This may actually be in my top five favorite episodes of the entire series. We, we, will, oh, wow. we'll, we will see. I'm surprised it ranks that highly for you. It's interesting. So there's a couple of reasons why this one works so well for me. First of all, it does admittedly use some songs that I really love. I love Blue Moon and Rhonda's take on it is both powerful and stunning and sultry. And then it goes into the Marvelettes version, which is adorable and bouncy. And I it just, and then it comes yes. right back down. And I, yes. oh, I love that. The, yes. uh, the comedy segment with yeah. uh, where it's the, the, the kind of the gender swap where uh, Shirley is the doctor and Carmine is the sexy nurse yes. is pitch perfect. And you can see the two of them are having mm-hmm. way too much fun with okay. it. Remind me to do that four times a day. <laughs> Smack. But yep. Won't. <laughs> and then and i love the skeleton doing the the, yeah. the rim shot i love the skeleton doing the rim shot i just the there's so best many things part is when the two of them start making out on the examination table and he just drops the sticks and covers his eyes <laughs> so great yes. it's so fun oh my it's gosh. so much fun uh yep and then you have uh and you have the boys doing a uh nat king cole track yes, it is uh, yes, you, you know, call the police, which is yep. which is great. They have yep. uh, yep. and then the freaking opera. Yeah. And it's it's yeah. it's lip synced yeah. and hilarious yeah. and yeah. and, yeah. Uh, and yeah. squ- yeah. squigliacci and squigliacci. I- yeah. The best thing about this is that Eddie Mecca was trained as an opera singer and they had mm. dubbed him as well. Uh, apparently, uh, several of the people who uh, came in to dub the roles have talked about this on YouTube. Oh, and, wonderful. Uh, they, they, they talked about the experience, said it was a good experience, but nobody did their own singing here, not even Eddie who had actual training. That's funny. Uh, this is an amazing episode. I love a lot of the segments here. The, there's absolutely necessary stuff in here. Um, Eddie and Penny's number, where they get to tap dance together. Uh, Leslie getting to show out. Uh, the operetta, which I'm deeply fond of. And uh, call the police, which is uh, one of the best quick toned numbers uh, in the show's history. Yeah, uh, it's up there with only if I've listened to Mama for me and Night After Night and Star Crossed. It uh, is really good. Yeah, it's it's, it's it's what I think. Also, what made me feel very comfy with this is you know I as much as I really love Laverne and Shirley, I do still love the show. Uh, there are more modern shows with more modern sensibilities that I do, you know, uh, have to say are kind of more of my favorites. And Bob's Burgers is one of them. And I love that Bob's Burgers almost kind of picks up this riff of a vignette episode with yes. different music numbers. Yes. Because yes, yes. there's like every season there's there's one of those. And it even um, uh, another show that also did the riffing um of uh of vignettes and 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 sort of anthology was uh futurama would yes. also do like an episode that was you know like yes. tales of interest and even yes. um the the nature documentary and yes. stuff the comedy central yes. years they're the best comedy central episodes in my opinion were the anthology ones i liked i liked a lot of the comedy central years because i'm weird <laughs> and i but the anthology episodes are really great um the ones that they did, the one that they did, those uh, based on off of nature documentaries. That was really good. Exactly with the whole uh, the Galapagos yes. turtles. Oh my yes, god. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, and the fish. They're all fish spawn trying to spawn. Yes. Um, in a way, this is a wonderful example of something that did take over the television uh, landscape, because none of this affects canon. Oh yeah. None of this has anything to do with anything. This is all taking place in Carmine and uh, Frank's heads, which is interesting enough when you consider the ramifications of some of the stuff. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, you know, pretty I, interesting. Carmine's mellowed. He's realized that he has a submissive side. That's like hey. let's let's we can't king shame that. Hey, if he wants to be if he wants to be a sex bomb with his shirt open in tight pants, let him. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, he's a handsome yeah. dude in good shape. And you know what also what also makes that that whole doctor's office uh, uh, yeah. comedy bit so cute yeah. to me is it's characters that are in that are in the show in canon in love. Yes. And you and you sort yes. of see that reflection of that romance yep. in the way they treat each other. Yep, yep. It's really sweet. It's really good. There is a lot of any mecha exploitation in season seven. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> to go along with the uh, cheesecake that we're getting from the girls that we're getting from Leslie, we got a lot of shirtless Carmine, especially towards the end of season seven. <laughs> a lot of half naked Eddie Mecca. It's a very enjoyable sight. I ain't complaining. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, it's especially obvious when um, you get him with his shirt open in this episode, and then a few episodes later, this lightning man and all of his clothing is burnt off. Yeah. <laughs> abs a go go abs a go go my first note by the way to uh seek into this for the episode is riding sex pop carmine <laughs> so it is mine mine is tom jones oh my god carmine doing tom jones and i suspect surely is it uh, oh oh no he's doing it for frank oh oh no oh no <laughs> <laughs> that's that's literally my first paragraph of notes uh, and, Fra and Frank's Carmine invitation slaughters me, but the fact that he's just sitting there just dying in agony <laughs> from Carmine's uh, attempt at being a uh, very sexual Tom Jones with his hips going everywhere and his chest out is... Yeah, none of that, tell us some music, not a pa song where your pants are on fire. Yeah, you look like your fire went out a long time ago. Boom, boom, ching. Hey, we know that he and Edna have a very active sex life. That is incorrect. Yeah, they, they, they don't fool around. He was serious. He meant he, it. He, he meant, meant it. it. <laughs> he meant it, baby. Uh, oh, gosh. Uh, I love that the first example they use, like you, like you point out, is Blue Moon, and that is a song that started out as this standard in the 1940s, uh, became a big rock hit, a doo-wop hit, in the 50s. And uh, Leslie Eastbrook gets to sing both versions mm -hmm. and have fun with it. And be both elegant and goofy, and she rocks it. It's a lot of fun. Yep. And as much as yes, my Blue Moon's one of my favorite songs. A lot of that is from American Wolf in London, but it's also just yes. it, a lot of it. Also, was when I discovered Ella Fitzgerald's version of it. That it's nice was version. it's a powerful version of it. I love Very that good. song. And yes. yeah, but yeah, Rhonda Leslie just God dang, it's like she is given yeah. a lot of meat to chew on and just rips it. It's it's great. Yeah, yeah, she kills it. She 100% kills it. I also wanted to mention yeah, something I really like in this as an anthology episode with these segments. Now, typically when Laverne and Shirley does dream sequences or vision sequences, they do the whole, you know, dissolve effect. Yeah. I like the sharp cuts in this episode. It's more yes. dramatic. And also reminds me of like real Hollywood musicals where often those movies don't like just like, the, you know, do a dissolve or what have you. Um, sometimes what they even do is just like turn around. It's like, oh, okay, back to normal now. And, you know, yeah. it's it, it works really well. And I love it. The sharp cut into the guys singing as they come into Cowboy Bills after Blue Moon is is fantastic. Yeah. And then the both then uh, Frank trying to sing Blue Moon badly. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so a good, good song. It's not of that baby and the baby and that hanky panky. And then seeing into the filthiest uh, vaudevillian doctor segment in the history of the universe. This is an actual vaudeville segment. Mm -hmm. This was performed in vaudeville uh, and is adapted and modernized for the uh, early 1980s here. Mm -hmm. it, it mostly works for me because of the gender reversal. This mostly works for me that way. Yeah, without the gender reversal, I don't think it would work because it also is yeah. – it's hard to see – those actors and those characters in that dynamic because you know we've always known that or we've known for a long time that shirley is the one wearing the pants in the relationship yeah 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 we all know that shirley leads things about a hundred percent she is the owner of the pants in the relationship uh nice butt carmine was my note here yeah <laughs> and all the cheesy jokes yeah my, my mine is then the booty the booty uh, the scouts are refusing to give her a um, give give her a room shot. That was great too. Yeah, boy, are these tongue depressors depressing? I said, boy, <laughs> are these tongue depressors depressing? 
If he had eyes, he would roll them. Yep. 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 And the then the demand for ten dollars and Phil Phil does a really great job holding up his end of the sketch. Absolutely, and, uh, because it because of that back and forth. The first visit is fifteen dollars. The second visit is ten. Good to see you again, Doctor. Ten dollars. Yeah, ten dollars. Beautiful. Absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect. We sneak from here into um Eddie into Eddie and Penny's lumber, Carmine and Laverne. Mm, God, this this ta- Yeah, it's oh, yeah. It's first of all. A plus choreography. I mean, my my. Yeah. I suddenly go, oh, tap that tip a tap a. You know, just kind of you know enjoying it, and then suddenly in all caps, holy cow, this is great! And just yeah. the use of mirrors, the split screen, the choreography, the music, just ah, oh, yeah. this was so it's good. So good. It's so 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 good. Uh, this is obviously Eddie and Penny's mutual experience here coming out and emerging until the light. And they both do such a great job with everything inherent in the act. Penny spent almost her entire childhood, like, at her mother's um, dance school. In basements and putting on plays and all that stuff. And uh, t- dancing along. So all that experience has come out here. Eddie had uh, years of theatrical experience before he ended up on Laverne Shaw. Well, not years. A few years before he ended up on Laverne Shaw. And every little bit of their love of dancing comes out in this scene and it is great it's beautiful it reminds me of how like when you find the kindred spirit in a group and you get the chance to uh to really let loose a certain love you have for something you both have for something it's like Mm -hmm. you like this i like it too oh my god you know like that that's i think the joy that really translate into this it's a a joy that translates into the sequence because you know you don't expect to get this quality of choreography, you know, on a weekly sitcom. You really don't. Like, th- this is a hell yeah. of a show. And that's, I think, kind of the cool thing about what it's referencing as it goes back through time is it brings to mind how in the old days of entertainment, you went and saw this stuff live for real. And every yeah. night these people were performing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Vaudeville every single night. Uh, the- and theater and Broadway. Broadway actors still do it. Yep. Every night they have to put on that quality performance and make it look like the first time. And that is what is amazing about a performer, officially stage performer. Uh, my note is this part is just the pure joy of watching two people who can dance, dance divinely together. Yeah. It's well put. Yeah. Really yeah. well put. That's all you need. The costumes are beautiful. The lighting is beautiful. Uh, the visual tributes to uh, Rogers and Astaire. Mm-hmm. And to uh, Gene Kelly, just glorious, perfect, beautiful look at. No notes. <laughs> so we seek to the boys making us feel good. Yeah. Uh, the rock and roll, and roll. Which, is, which according to Frank, sounds like a bunch of men tearing up the state. <laughs> oh, God. And then Carmine naming all those bands. Oh, yeah. That uh, did not survive the um, 1960s at all. Uh, is really great. All of it's beautiful. beautiful and I, I, and I absolutely adore the 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 distinguishments. I love that word, Len. I know you would. You it's would. Oh. the way what Michael does with his eyebrows. Oh yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah, the, because the fact this I like because of the fact that this is a a sort of a vision or a dream scene in a sense, you know, a fantasy sequence. It allows Michael and David to also do things that are not necessarily Len and Squig like hard canon, but it's Len and Squig mm-hmm. adjacent. It's it's going to play yeah. with those performances a bit. It is indeed. They are having a lot of fun with it. Uh, it's sexy in a way. It's playful. Both the two of them just you know going wild here and uh riding along to the beat oh that right that's right uh, I, that I, I i owe you yeah. i owe you an animated gif of uh uh lenny um stage humping yes you do i forgot about that <laughs> yes, <you do. laughs> it's life it's history it's great <laughs> how it's just squiggy gets into the history of rock and roll it's really great it's a, that was before the invention of rock and roll. Chuck Berry was only 10 years old. And he just gets all excited. And, <laughs> yeah, just, and the, Lenny finds it amusing. It's very sweet. I love it. Full out joyous humping is my note here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, they get dragged off by the cops. Because of course they get dragged off by the cops. Uh, of course they do. All of this is like really beautifully staged. I'm 90% sure that the guys that get in the background are different from the um, band members that they ended up using uh, in season six for Sing Sing Sing. 
I, I believe it is. Yeah, this it looks like yes. a very different. I mean, I have to. I would have to go back and check. And I, I uh, yeah. yes, I know I should have done that. But you it's a. Done that. <laughs> but it's a. But it's a case of where these were folks that just kind of pop in, you know, for here. And it would be cool to find out who they are because I will say the uh, the piano player is fantastic, and the uh, the is the main horn section. Yes. It's very impressive. Very, very, very impressive. Very good. Incredible, as a matter of fact. So I, I, I think they are credited at some point in the credits. Let's just look that up. Nick King Cole actually wrote the song, as well as um, son as first performed it. Mm. He actually wrote the song, which is why I thought it was super interesting. It was released for the first time in 1949. And I was looking for your music history there. Hey. Um. Now here comes the operetta, <sighs> and and Eddie just belting it out. There's so much going on in this operetta, y'all. There's so much going on. Um, obviously, each of the girls are, uh, each of the characters, rather, are opera stereotypes here. Shirley is a tragic Mimi from La Boheme. Laverne is a Valkyrie. Carmen is a clown. I do believe that Squiggy is supposed to be from the Marriage of Figaro. Uh, I ha- I'm not at all sure what Lenny is, but it has to be um, something from that. Something I think might be from the, pans, the Pan Flute opera. Which I can't recall entirely. Mm. Tragically, Rhonda is once again from the Mikado. <laughs> and she or she's from Madame Butterfly. <sighs> uh, that's happening. Yeah, that's that's my note. Oh crap, racist Rhonda again. God damn yeah, it. I know. <laughs> we did not need that in the season, guys. We did not need this at all. But in the back seat of his Cadillac, we went home to his couch. All at once he yelled out, yeah. I had stepped yeah. on his corn, then he, he blew then on my horn. horn. <laughs> All at once. Mimi, that is indeed a bummer. <laughs> the whole thing is so good. The lyrics are fabulous, and it's so much fun. I love this universe that it sets up with the girls are sisters living in this apartment next door to her fa- their father, and uh, they are still somehow yet poor and cannot pay for the rent, and enter Baron Squigliacci. <laughs> <laughs> there oh, are man. so many great lines here. First of all, Phil's not even bothering to lip sync most of the time. If you yeah. really look at him, <laughs> yeah, I know. Blah 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 blah. blah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I have oh. to ask, how much how much do you like hearing that deep voice coming out of uh, out of Lenny here? That uh, I will evict <laughs> you too. <laughs> well, Michael uh, is uh, listed as a baritone, which I don't. Never hear when I hear him sing. So it's, uh, it's kind of fitting for him, but it's, it's it's high enough that it makes sense to me. To me. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I think, I, I think all, the, all the voices they pick make sense to me, but yes, I enjoy that sound coming out of his mouth. The one-liners here. The one-liners. That is correct, mustachio character actor. I really hope that David Adler that. I hope so too. <laughs> and Mimi, sing for yourself. In other words, butt out. I don't know butt that out. song. <laughs> Learn it. <laughs> uh, and, Who and is I love this the, clown? It was this clown. I love the uh, consistent joke running gag of uh, sing to the horn and shield into the nuts. Yeah. 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 Okay. There's so much going on here, like romantically. We get a whole thing where Leonard Feather and Brunhilde flirt with their eyes and then bite. Simply breathing into each other's ears <laughs> and nuzzling yep. and hand kissing yep. until finally it culminates in an actual on the mouth kiss that lasts and lasts and lasts. <laughs> so it's <laughs> canon. It is. And now, and now she has a feather <laughs> yeah. stuck in her mouth. Yeah. 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 And, and, and not only do they get kind of quasi married there, we'll have a child of two or three or four. And we've had our fourth, we'll try four more. <laughs> like yeah yeah that's canon baby in some universes is canon oh, gosh. my actual note for this is ll is canon show mine is canon oh my god <laughs> <laughs> oh but it's... you approved of this though so i guess yeah yeah canon. okay you know in everywhere everything everywhere all at once sort of way sure yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And, and, and technically, this is they are the, the, the couples are canon in this universe. It counts in a way. It counts in a way. It counts. The writers had to have known something to just you know not kill off Lenny too, and just shoving Leonard Feather at Brunhilde. Hmm. <laughs> so, uh, it's very enjoyable. It's very pleasing. Um, 
Everybody's expressions here kill me. I love the way when Mimi and Carmine, when they kiss the first time, and he dips her, and her sleeve goes right into Squigachi's mouth, and you can see David go... <laughs> yes, out exactly. Mouth. Right, right. Yeah. And he's blowing the yeah, he's, and he also like blows on the sword and you know check the check the pulse and oh god yeah yeah he didn't tell me he was the champ sorry no sorry <laughs> you more nasal sorry <laughs> <laughs> so for the can trade off cannon the two of them two couples there uh we have Canon Fronda which we have to deal with again this season uh, yeah yeah it exists yeah it exists and of course uh, the helmet falling off and then. Leonard just gently puts it back on her head and smacks him again with the shield. Oh, it's really good. Oh, it's so great. Oh, this is beautiful. Squigliachi's dead. Oh, I never cared for him that much anyway. Beautiful. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Oh, this is great. Oh, this is fun. No matter which way your um, attachments swing, this is so much fun. So we get back to the restaurant. And this poor guy's sandwich is cold. Yep. And he's hungry. And he's hungry. And he just... Why didn't you serve the sandwich when it was hot? <laughs> and Carmine runs for his life. <laughs> Time to talk about food from the old days. Ugh. Oh, God, Frank. Oh, my Lord. This is all fun. This is so much fun. This is a fun little episode. Uh, it's not, like, a hyper necessary, but, man, y'all, it's a fun one. It's. It's I'd say one. it's hyper necessary in the sense that you get to see what these actors are capable of because there are some of even the best episodes of the show that don't show off the skill, the skill sets of the, of this talent, because th this was a, I, I guess what I mean is like when we get to, cause you know, this is making up for the fact there's no talent show. That's what yeah. this is doing. Yes, it is pretty much. And it completely like wins on so many levels for, for yes. me at least, you know, I just, yeah. it, it just, yeah. I, I absolutely adore the, how much of this is a, a show both a showcase and a celebration it's a yes. big party and that's really that's is. what's really Im impactful yeah. to yeah. me so yeah i guess you could say in season six uh sing 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 takes the place of that takes its place we also get child's play which you can also kind of count no way yes okay yeah those yeah. two kind of both made up for the the lack of uh of it as well and that's and that's the thing i also love those episodes too i think sing sing yeah. sing is is a it's a decent replacement but it, it gets a little um well, the main thing is just it doesn't end the way I want it to. And that will always hold it yeah. back a little bit for me. Yeah. Um, what? Then they don't make out? Yeah. <laughs> but make out, yeah. Sabrina's not yeah. worth it. She it, it took all that work to get her to notice him. Yeah. And yeah. all she wants is just yeah. an autograph. She's not like whispering yeah. in his ear like, hey, call me. Here's yeah. my number. Yeah, like, I know. <sighs> like I said, Sabrina is the dental dam that keeps Laverne and Lenny from happening in that episode. <laughs> <laughs> I said it before and I'll say it again. Uh, but back on track, I think. It, do you have any more notes or are we going for ranking time? I think we go for ranking time. I do have the notes about the writers, uh, the director oh, and the uh, the actor. So, OK, go so Gene, it. so Gene B. Collins as the customer real quick. He was likely a buddy of the cast or crew because he only had a credit on Happy Days before this and only gets into an episode of Hardcastle McCormick before seemingly disappearing from the scene as far as I be credits go. So the, just cover that. It's, it's a good little small part. His timing's really good with, you know, trying to grab the sandwich and his line delivery, et cetera. Okay, uh, two writers. So Eaton McElroy was has only this to his credit IMDb, so it could be a pseudonym, and it could be that it's like an Ethan McElroy, and they you know went under a different name after this project or yes. what have you. So Larry Strother, on the other hand, started his writing career with this episode, and then went on to three Happy Days episodes, thirteen episodes of Night Court from eighty-seven to ninety, created the Sinbad Show. And did uh, 37 episodes of Nightstand. His other big claim to fame aside from this was most uh, producing on some of these shows before making the unscripted jump to 2003 with Most Extreme Elimination Challenge. The image of it on IMDb will give you flashbacks if you are a millennial. You have been warned. Uh, so definitely somebody that understood, you know, the the the, the kind of the zaniness of, of, of uh, sitcoms, you know, came up in making these types of shows. I mean, the fact he created the Sinbad show, which I'm pretty sure ran for at least a season or two, you know, that uh, definitely counts. Okay, though, but this is what I'm most excited to talk about. Gary Mentier. Now, we've we've talked about Ooh. Gary Mentier before. He uh, did do an episode prior to this, and I apologize for not doing this, uh, this thorough of research before. He's been a supervising pro producer on The Vernon Shirley starting in season five. And he uh, him directed this episode makes a ton of sense because of his extensive background as a dancer. 
in the 1960s, including in films such as How the West Was Won and Inside Daisy Clover. Now, some of these are uncredited. But when he uh, passed away in 2016 at the age of 76, it oh, wow. uh, looks like some family members or friends did a compilation, or maybe even fans, did a compilation of his work as a dancer. You know in Hello, Dolly, there's a scene in a restaurant where there's a particular waiter that's having to go up and down the stairs and like has to do cartwheels and everything while maintaining yes. the balance? That's him. Wow. That's amazing. So Okay, that explains even more what's afoot here. Exactly. It's really great. So he became a producer in the 70s, a writer-director in the 80s. He jumped onto Punky Brewster, Family Matters, and would stay on the ladder until its conclusion, actually. Now, he already done Child's Play last season, and this will sadly be his last gig as director on the show. So I'm glad I was able to get this uh, this done. But uh, yeah, as as mentioned, he did pass away at the age of 76, but he left behind an enormous run of great projects in his wake. And to that, we say, rest in peace, Gary Mentier. Thank you so much for having given us this episode. And with that, I do believe it is now time to rank it. Um, this is a high, ooh, I'm going to call it a nine. This is a really good It's really good. It's, it's got a lot of excellent stuff in here. Uh, it's not flawless by any means. Like, it's not a necessary episode. It doesn't move the plot. But it is frosting. It is the most delicious frosting you'll ever taste in your life. <laughs> it is the creamiest buttercream in the history of the world. Now, you can skip this. You will not miss anything in the main storyline of the show. But it is uh, the most delicious frosting on the fluffiest cake in the history of the world. The performances alone is, are absolutely worth it. You will enjoy the heck out of this if you do spend time with this episode. This is a high nine. Yes, it's good, it's good, but not fully, you know, absolutely dirt to the ground necessary. There we go. I hear you. And that is, I guess, true. I think it's the case of where... I do like when things get to be wild and fantastical, so that's yes. always going to win points for me. I will give this a nine and a half. I don't think I'm going to give it a perfect ten because I agree that it doesn't have like the emotional depth. See, if this was, for instance, the both Carmine and uh, Frank trying to not just pitch these ideas to each other, which is really cool. I really love the bonding of these two in this episode, by the way, because this feels like a great continuation of the whole, uh, you know, can I get to be your son? You know, it's like, Dad, he's, she's making fun of me. You know, that whole relationship as it's grown. Yeah. But if they were, say, trying to pitch this to somebody, kind of the way Child's Play is trying to pitch the the Child's Play to this, you know, famous producer, that would have been, I think, something that could have elevated it. But at the same time, there's, uh, as you're saying, it's it's like, it's the perfect treat. It's a treat episode. And for me, it is one of the best that the show has done in that regard. So, yeah, that's it for my notes. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. It, it is worth your while. So I'm gonna, that's the way I'm going to put it. It is absolutely worth y'all's while. If you don't want, if you want to take the non-scenic route up for, through Laverne Shirley, this is not the episode for you. But if you want to have fun, go for it. This is a fun, awesome little treat of an episode. Heck yeah. All right, cool. So with that all said, we'll do a quick uh, word from our sponsor, and then we will come back and have uh, have some kind of you know discussion of what's coming up next and where you can find us on the interwebs. Hopefully you'll stick around and listen to us just a little while longer. All right. Thank you again, everyone, so much for joining us for Night After Night. And if you would like to know more, you can find us at Night After Night Pod on Facebook, WordPress, Tumblr, Patreon, YouTube, and wherever a great podcast can be found. And uh, we uh, hopefully will hear from you soon. We le- please leave us a comment if you'd like to throw us uh, throw a coin to us on our Patreon. That'd be super appreciated. You get the episodes a little early, and you can incentivize us to review one of the novels. I believe. Yes, yes, one of the novels, and I think some episodes of the animated series. So yeah, that's, that's the other one. one. That's the other one. Yep. Cool. Yes, it is. And yeah. So anyway, though, um, that weather is looking kind of uh, funky over there. Lisa, what what can you give us the forecast for what's coming next? When Carmine gets struck by lightning and survives, Squiggy sees dollar signs. Will Will the Big Ragu end up a pile of ragu on the pavement before his days as Daredevil are through? This is Lightning Man. Ah, Lightning Man. That's the new superhero show thing. Okay. (laughs) Lightning Man with the power to make lightning. (laughs) I mean, all all I gotta do, just give me... Give me my shoes and socks, put me on a carpet with some synthetic pants on, and I'll get you some lightning. Yay. Electric shocks for everybody. Bye, y'all, and for heaven's sake, if your dad starts fantasizing about you making out with your childhood best friend's 
ask him some questions. He's clearly he's got something to talk about. Bye now. Thank you.